So I went to go visit uh, one of my friends and at his airport, he's fortunate enough to have uh, two very large hangars with uh, a very large warbird collection. Um, some of the warbirds in there are uh, historically pretty significant. And just something about walking around in a, in a, in a dark, quiet hangar with warbirds is just, I mean, it's, it's spiritual. It's pretty cool. So it has nothing to do with flying around in a cub or trim, but uh, I took some video of the airplanes that will be the intro to this video. So enjoy that. Just to bring you up to date on the news of Europe that you are just turning on your radios, Great Britain is now at war with Germany. I know when I first started out, I, I did a ton of over controlling and a ton of like death grip uh, on the stick. And I'm going to take off, uh, hands off, just using, uh, have the airplane properly trimmed and my feet. And you'll see just how easy it, it is for the airplane to take off. Obviously, this is all relatively simple in a cub. It gets a little more complicated, the heavier and, and more complex and faster the airplane. But uh, I mean, you could still practice this in, in, in your airplane. And what happens if you know, something happens uh, where, where you lose your ability to steer the airplane with the ailerons and elevator. I mean, it has happened. It is possible. But more importantly, it's just, it's a good exercise to show you um, how light on the controls you really need to be when, when flying the airplane and how just fingertips and really just your feet um, can control the airplane just fine. And I'll, I'll attempt to do an approach and land the airplane with just trim and uh, throttle. Um, I'll keep my hands obviously a lot closer to the stick for that, but uh, it's just, again, it's something to show you how easy it is to control these airplanes and how being light to the touch is more advantageous than, than over controlling the airplane. Traffic, uh, Dakota turning base from way one, flying W. Flying W traffic, last zone is right crosswind, zero one, departing to the east, flying W. All right, so I'll get myself lined up here. Uh, hands off the stick, or close by anyway, get myself situated. All right, feet and throttle trim is set. Here we go. Flying W traffic, uh, the cat is turning final runway one, flying W. All right, so there you go, the airplane is pretty much on its way. And immediately you gotta get that trim forward. All right, so if you wanna climb, let's say you're have no control of your elevator. Obviously, give yourself a little more power. What's going to happen? The nose is going to come up. The nose is coming up a little bit too much. I need to put the car beat on. I'm sorry, just release some of that throttle. The nose is going to come down. And then as you can see, the nose is falling below the horizon. Just go ahead and add yourself a little power. And again, this is all just, just, just throttle. Obviously, trim is going to help you out a lot more. And uh, same thing when you turn the airplane. A little left rudder. The nose is going to drop. Give yourself some, some full power if you need it. And there you go. The nose comes up. Those comes up too much. Just 409, the Papa turning crosswind on runway 22, silver traffic. Flying W, uh, Dakota clear of active, flying W. Make a right turn, same thing. Nose is going to drop, increase the power. The nose starts to come up too much on you, just bring the power back. It's good to do, and we actually practiced this uh, in the old trusty Airbus uh, during sim training. You fly the airplane around with just trim and thrust. And the only reason why you would do that in the Airbus is if you have to reset all the flight computers. Um, that's what it says in the manual anyway. But the, the one thing that I do want to point out um, with, uh, with jets that have the engines, the engines underneath the wing, you feel it uh, when you give the airplane thrust, you increase the thrust, the airplane pitches up pretty significantly. Um, the airplanes that have the engines on the tail I flew the ERJ, but I'd imagine the uh, MD-80, MD-90 series is the same thing. With the engines back here, you give thrust and the nose is gonna pitch down. So um, the other interesting thing about the Airbus, uh, in case anyone cares, is it has auto trim. So it trims for you all the time. So basically what that means is you bank the airplane in a 20 degree bank and you don't need to increase back pressure, which is counterintuitive to everything you've learned as a pilot, right? 
So you could sit there, bank the airplane 20 degrees, let go, and the airplane will just stay in a perfectly banked 20 degree turn. Um, it'll do that up until 33 degrees of bank. Anything past 33 degrees of bank, and you have to start increasing back pressure uh, up until 67 degrees, which it won't let you go further than 67 degrees. Reason being is because it will require more than 2.5 Gs for level flight, and 2.5 Gs is a hard limit that the flight control computers will not let you exceed, both in normal law and uh, alternate law. So fun, fun Airbus fact of the day. The Cub, you can pretty much do anything you want, so, um, so there's that. All right, uh, there's, there's some people in the pattern, so in the interest of saving some time uh, and keeping my pattern a little tighter, I'll use the stick to turn base and then final. Uh, but normally, if, if you lose your elevator or aileron, you'd have to make really slow, shallow, wide turns. Flight of each traffic, Cub is turning base, zero one flight of you. But again, here are the exercises to show you just how, a, how well a properly trimmed airplane will fly, which is feet, throttle, and trim. Uh, the trim, you want to kind of set it and, and see what the airplane does. The throttle, you want to be a little bit quicker with uh, making adjustments, if that makes sense. All right, so not pretty, or not the prettiest, but it's just, it shows you that it can be done. 